So the reason you're not finding the time to invest, it has nothing to do with your packed schedule and it has everything to do with fear. Hi, I'm Tom Crosshill. I'm a professional investor and the pension funds I managed got the best results in my whole country. And here's what I wish that I had known when I started out. First, if somebody's trying to sell you a secret investment or a secret trading strategy, this person is either a scammer or just trying to sell you some kind of online course, okay? When it comes to investing in the market, you've got really safe, low risk investments. And these typically pay maybe a few percent of profit per year. And then you've got higher risk, higher profit investments, such as stocks, which on average over the past 50 years have made something like 9% per year. But if you see investments that promise you 20% or 50% or 100% per year or more, well, usually that's either something super, super risky or it's an outright scam. So what happens is that if you grow up poor, and I grew up poor, I remember this, you have this burning desire to build wealth quickly. So when somebody says, well, investing could make you 7% per year, 9% per year, 10% per year, you think ah, that's too slow. I, I, I'm not even gonna bother, okay? I need more, I need something faster. And then because you're chasing something faster, you just fall on your face and you get burned and you lose your money. And then you say, oh, investing doesn't work. Just forget it, I hate it. I'm never gonna invest again. But the problem was not with investing. The problem was you being naive and thinking that get rich quick works. No, it doesn't work. There's no get rich quick, okay? The only way investing works is slow and steady. It's not instant. It doesn't happen in a year. You're not gonna be a millionaire by 2026 or whatever, but it actually works and that's the good part, okay? Now there is one exception to this. Uh, there is an area where investing can make you rich much faster and that's if you invest in your own business. Let's say you've got a great business idea and you've got the skills to make it happen and then you invest your money and you invest a lot of time and effort. If things go well, yes, you can make your money grow much, much, much faster. But even so, a lot of businesses fail and even successful businesses often take seven to 10 years before they are really profitable, before they are real successes, okay? So forget fairy tales. There is no get rich quick. There are no investing secrets. It's slow and steady wins the race. And if you are too impatient for that, you're gonna stay poor, almost guaranteed. Second piece of advice, you've got to save more money. I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter how brilliant your investment strategy is. If you save and invest 100 euros, that's never gonna be a million, okay? The single best predictor of your investment success is not your strategy, it's not luck, it's not what happens in the market, it's how much money you invest. So your first priority by far should be to figure out how to make more money and how to reduce your expenses. In my early 30s, I worked super hard to get a high paying job. And then my wife and I, we lived in a small apartment. We drove a super old car. We saved every cent. And that allowed us to invest a ton and build some real wealth. If you want to build wealth without sacrificing your standard of living, then you should focus on growing your income. Find ways to improve your skills or to learn new skills which have a high value in the market. Then learn to negotiate, learn to get a salary increase. If you think outside that little box of a standard career progression, like you're a junior accountant and then you're an accountant and then you're a senior accountant and step by step from 25 to 65 and then you retire. If you think outside of that box and look at the market and see what skills are actually rewarded, see who gets paid the most, learn those skills, get those skills. You can learn them. There's nobody stopping you in the evening from going on YouTube or Khan Academy or whatever and improving your skills. And then if you learn how to negotiate, how to go to your employer and say, look, I'm creating value. I'm doing all these things outside of my job description. How about we find a way where I get compensated for that? or you build the skills that it takes to start a new business and make money that way. The opportunities for making money once you open up your mind are all around you. So the difficult part of this advice is, yes, if you want to be really successful with investing, you have to find ways to make more money or reduce your expenses. But the beautiful part is that this is very doable. And once you shift your mindset, this can really change your life, all right? Third piece of advice, go pro or go passive. 
a lot of people like to do some stock picking in the evenings. They read up about Tesla or Nvidia or Microsoft or whatever other stocks. They read some annual statements, maybe play with some numbers in Excel and try to find good stocks to buy. The problem is, Picking winning stocks is extremely difficult. An interesting piece of research from Arizona State University said that over the past 90 years, there were 26,000 different stocks available in the American stock market. Half of all the profits from investors came from just 83 stocks. So 83 stocks out of 26,000 gave you half of all the profits. The real winners in the stock market are extremely concentrated. You're looking for a needle in a haystack. And if you want to find those needles in the haystack, well, you better be ready to work 100 hours per week, read all the books possible on the subject, like go all in, become the next Ray Dalio or Warren Buffett or whatever. But if you're not willing to do that, if you just want to spend a few hours in the evening looking for some likely stocks to buy, well, I mean, if you enjoy that stuff, I mean, fine, more power to you, but you're going to waste a lot of time, a lot of effort, and your investment results will suck. They will almost certainly be worse than if you simply invested in the whole market. So that's why I say, if you're not willing to go pro, if you're not willing to commit 100% to like all your working hours are spent on investing, then just invest in passive investments like index funds or ETFs. Study after study shows that index funds and ETFs get great results. They beat not just amateur stock pickers, but most professional investors as well. So what's the point of wasting the precious hours of your life if you can just buy an index fund or ETF and get a better result? And the thing is, the time that you save, the many hours that you're going to save, you can invest them in your education, in improving your skills, and then you can make more money and save more money and put that in the market. And the final result will be much, much better. And you might think, sure, it's 83 stocks and I know which ones they are. That's like Apple and Nvidia and whatever. But here's the problem. Yeah, if you had guessed that Apple and Nvidia are the right stocks to buy before the rest of the market, before they became winners, then yes, you would have made a killing. It would have been brilliant. But if you only think about it after these companies are super successful and super popular, well, they can still be pretty good investments, but the stock price is already really high. It's not like you can jump in and get the stocks at a good cheap price and make a killing. It's usually too late for that, okay? So it's a real challenge to find these winners ahead of the rest of the market. It's almost impossible unless you are a really driven and talented professional investor. So that's the third principle. Go pro or go passive. Now, here's my piece of advice number four. Taxes will mess you up. I've lost count of how many people have said to me, listen, Tom, I've been investing in stocks or ETFs or whatever. Do I need to pay any taxes? No, that's a bad, bad idea. Don't invest before you understand what's going to happen with taxes. Not unless you want to get in trouble with the government or even go to jail. Or, okay, if that doesn't happen, pay fines or pay too much or simply pick inefficient investments that get you a bad result. Think about taxes before you start investing and you will save money and you're going to save time and it's going to be easier and your stress level will be lower, okay? Think about taxes after you start investing and then you're trying to fix a problem and it's stressful and painful and expensive. And heads up, this can actually be one of the most challenging parts about investing. If you live in Europe, every country has a different tax system. The local government websites aren't really that helpful most of the time and it's hard to find reliable information online. Okay, so you need to really spend some time and effort figuring out how taxes work wherever you live. And then if you move to a different country or if you're an expat, it gets even more complicated. Maybe you've heard about people like Shakira getting into trouble with tax authorities in Spain, okay? That happens quite a lot to normal people as well, not just celebrities. So how do you figure this stuff out? Well, you can do a bunch of Googling and search for information online. If you have a background in finance or taxes, that can work. Uh, you can pay a tax advisor. Usually that costs anywhere from 200 euros per hour up. Or you could check out the training resources I have at my training program, the Index Masterclass. All the info is in the description. So my fourth piece of advice is don't mess with taxes. Figure out taxes before you start investing. And here's the fifth piece of advice. You might be thinking that you're not investing because you're too busy to get started. But chances are that's not true. You are probably not investing because you're scared. 
And that's okay. That's completely fine. You don't want to lose your money. But you have to recognize that fear is stopping you because I see it all the time. Once you understand how damaging it is to leave your money sitting in your bank account, once you realize that inflation means that prices are going up all the time, the money that is sitting there, it is losing value. You could be making so much profit over the years, even with a moderate investment strategy, that it's a total no-brainer to invest, right? So if you know all this and you're still not investing, it's not because you're busy. Sure, you have work, you've got projects, you've got family, but like if you had any other opportunity to improve your life in a big, big way, I mean, you would find the time for it, right? So the reason you're not finding the time to invest, it has nothing to do with your packed schedule and it has everything to do with fear. What's gonna happen? Am I gonna lose my money? What do I do? I don't wanna regret my decisions and all this stuff. And again, that's completely natural. Everybody feels that way starting out. Once you realize that that's what's happening, you can address it. And how do you address fear? Well, in my view, you do it by getting educated. Once you understand how investing works, once you understand what the risks are and how do you manage risk, how do you control and reduce it, once you understand what kind of profit is reasonable, which investments are smart and which are just gambling, then the fear starts to melt away and you free yourself up to start putting your money to work. But first, you have to get educated. I've been teaching investing for eight plus years and I've seen so many people go through this and it doesn't matter like what your background is. I've seen experienced bankers struggling with this. I've seen accountants and I've seen artists, musicians, stay at home moms, like everybody goes through the same psychological process in the beginning where you have to work with your psychology. You have to understand, yeah, I can't control exactly what's gonna happen in the market. I cannot guarantee that my investment will always go up. I have to accept some risk and then I have to learn how to manage that risk and how to be okay psychologically with not having that control, okay? Because we're used to having control. We're used to planning our days and planning our lives. And then when we put money in the market, we have to realize that we can't control the result, okay? But as we get more knowledgeable, as we understand what we're doing better, we know that we can manage the risks, okay? We can make sure that we are making smart investments, which are not guaranteed, but are very, very likely to get us a good result. And as you get more knowledge, the fear and stress melts away. So in my experience, it's really important to acknowledge the fear, accept that it is normal, and then start educating yourself, and then start playing with small investments, small sums of money to get used to the experience of having some money at risk, of having some money in the market. And then as you get that experience, as your brain and, and limbic system or whatever like gets used to having that small amount of money at risk out there, you will lose the fear of it, okay? You will lose this concern and it will become easier and easier to trust more and more into the market and to really start growing your wealth and earning passive income and, and finally heading toward financial freedom, okay? So if you can master this inner fear, this inner voice that is holding you back, that's gonna pay huge dividends for you, okay? So that's why my fifth piece of advice is you're not too busy to start investing. You're probably dealing with some fear that is holding you back. And it's important to look that fear in the eye, overcome it and get going. Bonus advice number six, you don't have to invest a lot of money day one. You know what I call somebody who has got 50 euros invested in the market? I call them an investor. So give yourself permission to just open a brokerage account and buy a stock or ETF with 20 euros or 50 euros or 100 euros. Just get going, okay? Get over that initial resistance, that initial hesitation. Become an investor and then the momentum hopefully will keep you going.